The drama department at New Westminster Secondary School is taking a unique approach to combat bullying. Rick Bladell explains. Great. In five, four, three, two, one. I think I like girls. I think I'm gay. For almost 10 years, senior acting classes at New Westminster Secondary School have been tackling bullying. And what better way to illustrate bullying issues than students creating, directing, and starring in their own play, Rock Solid. They, they see more of the situations in the school, and, and we, we kind of have to show that we understand and show that we can take a stop so we can kind of be representatives to other students that are our age and they can connect with us. The anti-bullying efforts are also including the New West Police Department. Rock Solid is a joint venture between the New Westminster Police Service and New Westminster Secondary School for the whole purpose of uh, drawing positive attention to the anti-bullying campaign, campaign. What better way to educate what peer abuse is, and that's really what bullying is, it's a form of abuse, uh, is to have peers educating other peers. I've always really wanted to be a part of it because it's so impactful, especially being able to go from being in the seat watching it and watching the impact it does have on people around you and then actually being a part of it and being part of the process. Can you knock on the chair like you would not? Although students are the stars, drama teacher Tracy Cave provides guidance from her years of rock solid experience. Uh, this year's themes deal with homophobia and the language around that and the bullying around that. We haven't done that before so it's a little bit of uh, uncharted territory for us. So the future is we do want to hit elementary school bullying, middle school bullying, and high school bullying, and take it to our whole community. Rick Bodell in New Westminster for BCIT Magazine. The One World Art Show for Haiti takes place Saturday night from the TELUS World of Science. Ragnar Hagen caught up with one of the local artists featured in the show and got the a one preview world. of his artwork. It's about 60 local artists from around the Lower Mainland. Bob Garlick, one of the profiled artists, specializes in something called distressed art. Well, the, the style of art is distressed, right? So basically, what you want to do is have art that's been exposed to the elements, and it gives it this kind of gnarly feel to it. So the piece I've got behind me, it's using uh, ripped out magazines. Definitely, it's, it's what the core message of the art's about. And then that is the reason I've used the, the words and glued the words on. So I w just went up and, and looked up uh, different variations of the word lust and um, sensuality and things like that. Bob's signature piece, named Telephone Buddha, is made up of pieces he picked up during his travels around the world. It's made up of um, an international collection of stuff. Corrugated uh, iron ha that's been rusted is from the slums of Bangkok. The telephone wire is from uh, Thailand and the Buddha itself is from a collector that I know in Asia. Event organizer Monica Blachar explains why the art show has also become a fundraiser. I'm very much into the arts and I have always volunteered so I like to incorporate um, group shows and fundraisers together. So what I've done is I've collected 60 artists to show and sell their work and I've also put together a $20,000 silent auction. The One World Art Show goes Saturday May 1st at the TELUS World of Science. Tickets are $25 and can be purchased through Monica's company, Mab Ventures. Rogner Hagen in Vancouver for BCIT Magazine. After finding their daughter playing with boxes rather than toys, a new Westminster couple decided to open up a toy store. But as Jonathan Horst found out, this store takes a more classic approach to play. Got a lot of fun with that. Karen Schmetzer opened up this store three years ago. It's called Pedagogy Toys and they aim to sell toys that are different from the norm. The idea came to her when she observed her children playing with the normal toys she bought them. Uh, we were inspired by our children. You know, after the birth of our first child, we discovered that she had a better time playing with a lot of the packaging and things that uh, yeah. they came with. The store sells toys that are more basic in principle. They're not tied to cartoon characters and plots. Rather, they promote creative play. Karen's husband, Craig, was studying to become a teacher when Karen came up with the idea. They used that background to figure out what it is they wanted to sell. 
Uh, any, anything creative, anything that requires imagination. We're big on our kids being imaginative and have a creativity. And uh, the future of pedagogy is, of course, we're just launching our e-commerce and just for people to use it as a resource. And uh, we just like to be able to, you know, have a place for our family to grow and uh, make a difference, a small difference in people's lives for parents to spend more time playing with their children. As for those children, they will just keep on playing. Jonathan Horst in New Westminster for BCIT Magazine. Baby Sign Language classes take place at the Carisdale Community Center every Monday morning. And as Keenan Kip found out, the classes are helping hearing moms and tots learn to communicate. Every Monday morning at Carisdale Community Center, the strollers roll in for Baby Sign Language class. Changing diapers, changing diapers. As instructor Sherry Cowhausen explains, the class is designed to help hearing parents communicate with their hearing children as early as possible. Kids will start to pick it up from about six months on, usually about eight to ten months is where they really start connecting with it. But I think it's er good to do it earlier than that as well too because the hardest part is putting it into your lifestyle. So it's not just learning it, it's doing it. Kids have to see it all the time, just like talking. Horse. Horse. Ellen, one of the mums in the class who didn't want to give her last name, says the best part of the class is all the new signs they learn. I think we all kind of knew like the easy ones, like the more and each and just learning different, like just new words, it's, that's the best part I guess. Because you can't really get it from reading books and reading, looking at pictures, you actually need someone to actually show you. Show you. Think of maybe um, crumbling cheese. The program is based on the theory that children have the ability to communicate before they're actually able to verbalize. Well I think it's really important because at the time when children can't talk, they can still communicate and this is a really good way for them to communicate. They love to look at faces, they love to look at hands, so they can pick it up easily and you've got that communication before they can even talk to you. As the class ends and everyone packs up, the mums and babies head home to practice their signs and have a well-deserved nap. Keenan Kip in Carisdale for BCIT Magazine. If you have any questions or comments regarding this program, please visit us online at bcitbroadcastnews.com or www.bcit-broadcast.com. I'm Carly McLennan, along with Alwena Shirley, and that's today's BCIT Magazine. We'll leave you now with another scenic look at Eagle Creek. Thanks for watching. <laughs>